I'm Joanna Simpson here at Quant Mines International in Vienna. Joining me now is Peter Carr, Department Chair, Finance and Risk Engineering at NYU Tandon School. Thank you very much for joining me. Sure, Joanna. And just tell me, uh, what are the latest trends in quantitative finance? Well, there's several. I mean, for one, machine learning has certainly become a topic that many people have suddenly become interested in. And I'm sure you've heard that from others as well. So at Tandon School, where I teach, we have several courses in it, and they're well attended. And probably the reason is students get jobs off the back of it. So I imagine um, that uh, this trend will continue. And you know, machine learning is a very broad subject. Uh, it comprises a wide swath of techniques. And uh, you know, really, the breakthroughs have been in particular areas such as neural networks and reinforcement learning. And um, anyway, we're seeing talks at this conference on those particular areas and their application to finance, which is not so straightforward. There's lots of issues related to noisy data, lack of data you know, that plague finance in particular. Um, but I suppose that's why we need specialized uh, talks on that subject. So that is certainly one. Um, down the road, a lot of talk about quantum computing, changing the magnitude of the calculations we can do. Um, there was actually a recent study came out this year where for uh, some physicists were actually able to reverse time using a quantum computer for <laughs> a very short interval. And uh, you know, I thought personally that was kind of like astounding. I'm not sure about the implications for quantitative finance, I have to admit. But let's say we tend to make, actually without thinking about it, various assumptions such as, for example, that our uncertainty about things increases as the horizon does. But actually, like let's say this you know, feet uh, suggest that maybe we need to rethink some of our basic assumptions. So, so I wouldn't call that a trend, but let's say it's a uh, a recent event that might cause us to rethink some things. So this is an area that's continually developing. But where do you see room for innovation in quantitative finance in the next few years? Well, I, uh, I feel compelled to talk about what I'm working on in particular in this subject, uh, in this question on innovation. So, um, so obviously we apply math in quantitative finance. That's what quantitative means. And um, it turns out if you know the field of math that it branches at the top into two big areas which are algebra and analysis. And I can guarantee you that 100% uh, of the math content of the talks here at this conference are in the field of analysis. Okay, so, so there's this other half of math that so far has been essentially ignored. And um, so actually that's what I'm working in is application of abstract algebra to financial problems. And um, so I, um, let's say I'm interested, I'm not the first to think about this it turns out, but let's say it's certainly a fringe topic and I'll be interested to see if it catches on. So in terms of that you're going to be talking about that today, what's the one thing you'd like people to take home from that talk? Right, so the specific application I, I have of the application of abstract algebra to finance is the valuation of a Bermudan style claim. So Bermudan means can be exercised at many times and this kind of problem is first of all important, there's huge uh, liquidity and so-called Bermudan swaptions. And um, secondly, has was understood very well numerically, but not so much analytically. So, so, I mean, really abstract algebra is about trying to understand things from a quote, analytical, <laughs> okay, I guess that sounds confusing because it's to be contrasted with analysis. But let's say from a symbolic uh, expression perspective. And, um, so anyway, what I was able to do is, is think of sort of, first of all, basic optionality, like European style optionality as a type of sum. And then, so, um, and then when it comes to Bermudan optionality, it's like you have options on options on options, which becomes sums of sums of sums, which in the end is just a sum. <laughs> so, so in the end, it boils down to straight, to an addition, not the usual kind, but still an addition. And um, it does turn out that I can connect the valuation of 
what is thought to be a hard problem, which is valuing a Bermudan option, to the valuation of a coupon bond, which is generally thought of as an easy problem where you simply add the present values of the coupon and the final payoff. So, so the takeaway, I hope, is that we can actually, we're used to thinking of um, optionality and summing as two different things. But just as Einstein, let's say, united energy and mass, I hope to unite them under one umbrella using abstract algebra. Okay. Well, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Peter Carr from NYU Tandon School, thank you for your time. Sure, my pleasure, Joanna.